So I've been checking out this Lamar Jackson, Bill Polian situation, and I don't like the engaging too much negativity, so I've kind of just been kicking back and watching this thing play out. Now, if you're not familiar with what I'm talking about here, here's a brief summary. Former GM and current NFL analyst Bill Polian has been making some pretty ridiculous remarks about Heisman winning quarterback Lamar Jackson heading into the draft. Now, Bill was a GM for 23 years and he went to four Super Bowls and so he deserves some respect for his past accomplishments. He also said that Randy Moss and T.O. did not belong in the NFL Hall of Fame, so he also deserves credit as an analyst for ignoring all stats film, and facts anytime it doesn't line up with his own personal bias or opinions. So there's that. Anyway, he said that Lamar should change his position to wide receiver to give him a better chance to succeed in the NFL instead of waiting until he's 29 like Terrell Pryor did. Again, some alternate facts there. Terrell Pryor was 26 when he switched, but okay, I guess I get your point. Anyway, Bill's opinion is just that, his opinion. I think when he made that statement, a lot of people were kind of taken back, but still didn't panic as we just kind of sit back and waited for the reasoning behind it. Like, what's the expert analysis that caused you to feel this way? This is when things got a little bit troublesome, all right? He proceeds to say that Lamar Jackson is too short. Now, Lamar Jackson's 6'3", meanwhile, for comparison's sake, Aaron Rodgers is 6'2", Tom Brady is 6'4", and let's not forget the actual short quarterbacks who are having success in the league right now, Drew Brees, Russell Wilson, and name a couple. Not to mention, Bill loved Johnny Manziel a few years ago and said Cleveland owed it to their fans to draft Johnny fourth overall. Johnny was six feet, maybe a little bit shorter. He also praised Baker Mayfield, who's 6'1". And by the way, I love Johnny and Baker Mayfield. I've made complimentary videos on both of them in the past and will continue to root for those guys. But the fact that he said Lamar was too short while praising the other guys who Lamar is actually taller than, it's just insane. Right? He then implied that Lamar would get injured at QB due to his frame, but Lamar has never missed a game in college due to injuries, so there's really no precedent there. It's not like RG3 who already had a knee surgery in college, but that wasn't it. He then said that the reason he should play wide receiver is to have the ball in his hands more, but who has the ball in their hands more than the quarterback? Like None of it made any sense, and yeah, it pissed a lot of people off understandably so now again y'all know me i prefer to sit back and look at things from a positive more motivational perspective because that's how you win in the end you don't win from crying in a corner cats gonna doubt you things are gonna be unfair that's just how it goes but the fact is bill polian doesn't get to decide what kind of career lamar has ultimately only lamar can do that so in this video i'm gonna give you three reasons why bill polian's ridiculous comments will actually help lamar jackson's career playing quarterback in the nfl let's get it yeah, Number one, the chip on Lamar's shoulder grows. Lamar has been underrated and disrespected a ton since he's been constantly written off as just an athlete who can only make plays with his legs and people saying that he can't throw. Even if you only watch the highlights, you can literally watch a five minute highlight clip of his senior season and see that that's not the case. Now, if you've only seen a few highlights of his amazing running ability, then, you know, I guess I could see how you could mistakenly feel that way. But these analysts are supposed to be pros, so they should be watching some film, right? Bill Polian didn't even bother to look up Lamar's correct height, so I doubt he was watching any extended film at least before he made these remarks. Also, lots of analysts have discounted the fact that Lamar improved as a passer every single year he was in college. It showed constant development and commitment to the position. And while he isn't a perfect QB by any stretch, the fact that his 59% completion rate is higher than your projected number one pick who has a 56% completion rate is pretty baffling to me. I'm not saying that Lamar should be the number one overall pick because his completion rate is higher than the guy that you have slated as the number one pick. I'm just saying it's crazy that Josh Allen's 56% is okay and Lamar Jackson's 59% means he can't throw a lick. Not to mention that Lamar's receivers dropped a higher percentage of his passes than Allen's receivers dropped of his. Further separating their completion percentages if you're looking at the true completion percentage. When you look into these numbers, you realize that Lamar is not being judged fairly by many scouts and analysts, including Bill Polian. 
But instead of sitting around and moping about not getting a fair shake, Lamar seems to be taking more of the Kobe approach to this, which is just using all of this nonsense as fuel. It's a powerful thing and ultimately, his mindset and how he handles being counted out will go a long way in determining how his career plays out. Like I say, I think this is something that Lamar will always hold on to, whereas if he was coming out and just getting a whole bunch of hype, that might go to his head. Maybe he doesn't work as hard as he needs to. But because he's being doubted so severely, I think that propels him even further to do every single thing in his power to be a successful NFL quarterback. Number two, better draft placement. Trust me. Bill Polian has a lot of clout in the league and some owners will take his inaccurate words as pure gold. They'll pass on Lamar. He'll drop down a bit. But the further he drops, the better chance he's got to go into a better situation. A more stable organization where he doesn't have to go in and be the savior right away. I've seen some mock drafts that had him going late in the first round, maybe early in the second. And one of the more intriguing spots, I think, is the Jacksonville. With that defense, a great backfield, and the fact that Blake Bortles isn't a long-term solution. Lamar can go in there, have no pressure starting right away, learn the offense, take Bortles' spot, not be asked to do too much as they can lean on the defense and the running game, and he can basically take the Russell Wilson approach and slowly get more and more responsibility over time. Now, obviously, this can play out in a number of different ways. This is kind of the way I see it going in my head. Either way, though, plenty of people are saying that Lamar could be the steal of the draft, and the further he falls, the more valuable he becomes. He will lose some rookie contract bread and and that sucks, but he'll need to think long term here. He'll still become a multimillionaire instantly, and he'll be able to really hit him on that second contract. Not to mention, by year two or three, dude's gonna be so marketable that his endorsement money is gonna be through the roof. So if he focuses on what he needs to do, he gonna eat. Now the last byproduct of this whole situation will be lowered expectations. The further Lamar falls, the further his expectations drop. So now everything he does well will be that much more impressive. He, just like all the other quarterbacks in this draft, are projects and all of them have issues. So Lamar's going to make some mistakes and when he does, the internet will overreact. Then he's going to make an amazing play and when he does, the internet will overreact. But Lamar just got to stay level, okay? But like I said, Lamar won't be expected to carry a team all by himself. And when he starts putting up those crazy stats, he'll be appreciated just that much more instead of being looked at like, like, yeah, he's a top three pick. He's supposed to do that. You know what I'm saying? Like sometimes it's better to travel the longer, more difficult road. Your character grows and your story is going to be so much better in the end. The idea that Lamar should not be given the same opportunity to refine his game and adapt to the NFL just like all the other quarterback prospects who also have some issues is pretty ridiculous. But I think if Lamar can capitalize on these three things right here, these Bill Polian comments will only enhance Lamar's legacy at the end of the day. Hope y'all dug the video. If you did, don't forget to like, subscribe, share the video. I'm going to holler at you next time. My name is Flimlo Raps. One.